Hey fam, how's it going? My kindred souls. It is always good to see you. Okay, I gotta admit, I had a little bit of difficulty digesting this one. Um, so, haha, <laughs> foreshadowing. So, we're gonna talk about The Demonologist by Gerald Brittle. This is the careers of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Grab your ankles, here we go. So first and foremost, um, I feel like we need to keep in mind that by the time these two even spoke with Gerald, they'd already been doing this shit, right? They'd already been doing their college lectures. And when I say college, I mean like they were doing, they were just talking with folks and it happened to be on a lot of uh, college campuses and such. As a matter of fact, there is a scene like that in the first Conjuring movie in which Lorraine Warren is in that scene. She's in the crowd. If you went into this like me, thinking there are over a hundred objects in that fucking museum, they have this thing, it was in their home, but it's since been moved, um, called the Occult Museum. That's where Annabelle is, all the shit from the Conjuring movies, that room. And... I, I wanted to get into that nitty gritty. I wanted to hear it. Like you see that shit and you're like, God, I want to hear those stories, right? The first couple of chapters took me, took some difficulty to get into. Right off the bat, they keep mentioning the Amityville uh, house because this was published in 1980. For me, it didn't really pick up in those first couple of chapters until uh, Gerald gets into their childhood, what life was like as a kid for Ed Warren and such, and Lorraine. And then, it really wasn't until chapter three, but chapter three starts with a capital A, if you know what I mean. So of course that chapter was good. It was a classic. <laughs> the classic tale of Annabelle. All right, there goes that note. Okay, now first of all, you know like you turn in your freaking assignment and your teacher gives it back to you just like, I have some thoughts. So one of my main notes I wanted to make was as fantastical as some of the events can seem um, because they do get it, you know, they do go over a couple of them. And uh, I really appreciate the balance to things, right? Because it's not just always, even though uh, Ed was Catholic, um, it isn't just Catholicism that's going to save you from the demons, right? Like, uh, Lorraine herself even mentions, like, you know, to be a witch, basically. These are my words, um, explaining what she explained. Um, to be a witch doesn't have to equate being evil. And they also do mention that, you know, like I was saying, you don't have to be Catholic. Like, whatever means, you know, whatever you have going on, even if you're an atheist, like you still have options. There's still ways that you can protect yourself, that you can do whatever. Um, so regardless of whether you believe them or not, whether I believe them or not, I appreciated that. There's, there's a balance. Gamer fans, what did I, oh, there are parts that reminded me a bit of Alan Wake. Get in the light, Carolyn. <laughs> oh, there was another point. I just said something about a nun and I was like, a nun, you say? <laughs> God, I love that bitch. Don't fucking love her movie. I don't understand. I don't understand. Annabelle got the Lux fucking treatment, didn't she? Our nun got shit on. <laughs> I'm just mad. Like, that was some creepy. I'm like, are you kidding me? Do you know how many times I was like, no, please, with that bitch in The Conjuring 2? If they were genuinely wanting to help people, which is what we're being sold on, I can respect that. Like, it's really difficult to shit on that, right? No here that just says, yes, talk demon to me. <laughs> oh, what? I feel like as you hit the halfway point, if you are at the point of like, just give it a minute, give it a minute. If you've watched all the Conjuring movies and shit, and you know, it's meh. You're fine, don't worry about it. Pretty much the main gist of what you want, you would glean from this, you already have available to you in the movies. Cause you know, some people, they just don't wanna fucking read the book. They wanna watch the movie and that's fine. You're still getting the story. Um, and yeah. If you are someone who 
has always been intrigued by them. Like a lot of times back in the day when we were growing up, if there was some kind of ghost story, whatever the fuck series, um, and they would mention like Ed and Lorraine Warren, they're like, oh, she's about to get good. You know what I mean? Like you knew those names if you were into this kind of shit, right? Um, so if you're someone like that, yeah, give it a read. Give it that once over. But otherwise, like there are times when it can get very dry, like halfway into the book, I really, I noticed that I kept thinking of Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard, you know? And, and by that, I mean the repetition of it all. Listen, I only made it a hundred book, a hundred pages, whoo, a hundred pages into Dianetics. <laughs> And then I like complained to my freaking bandmate. I was like, dude, all it is is repetition. Get the fuck out of your way. And here's how great your life could be. Oh, gee, you would just get the fuck out of your way. Repeat, repeat, repeat. But then like around what, page 80 or some shit, you learn about the clear. Wait, you don't learn about it. You hear about it because he's still just repeating. You still don't know what the fuck it is, but you keep hearing all about it and how helpful it can be, don't you? Before you give me shit for reading even a hundred pages of that, how are you supposed to debate with your friends if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about? Um, what? But yeah, when I complained about that, my buddy was just like, yeah, Amy, that's how you brainwash people. Repetition. Rinse. Repeat. You know, like I was too close. I had to back up and be like, duh. So yeah, that's how I was feeling by the time I hit like the halfway point. It was just a lot of repetition was going on. Um, it's nice to get into the nuts and bolts of uh, being a demonologist and working alongside these folks that are uh, performing actual exorcisms. And Ed and Lorraine's stories are really freaking interesting when you get the fucking chance to see them. If there were over a hundred items in that freaking occult museum, <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> I want more and you do get more, but it's, it's like a part of me, like I'm so used to not wanting to spoil shit. And you know, at the same time, it's like, I kind of feel like I'm possibly saving people time in their lives. You know what I mean? And when they do go over most of the tales are things are mentioned like offhanded in conversation. Like for example, this this one house, things were levitating everywhere. And there's and you're like, can we get to that story please? You know what I mean? Versus it just being referred like, to. Okay, yep, right. You have a lot to tantalize. You have a lot of these little tidbits that make us want more, but you're fucking it up. It's like all the repetition is an attempt to meet the freaking word count. Right? Oh, there's a part where they're talking about these ladies who live together and they, you know, bought a house together and stuff. And then they like, you know, went on vacation together. <laughs> it's <just> like, <laughs> they were such good friends, huh, Ed? <laughs> Silly. Anyway, my notes on the movie, The Conjuring 3. I didn't, I don't hate it. I mean, at least he produced it, right? Um... I feel like there were a lot of really obvious tippings of the hats. For instance, when our good old priest shows up. Pretty much, if there's any point in this movie where you're like, hmm, is that supposed to be inspired by, or whatever, like. And it's not that I don't think elements like that were happening before, like a tipping of the hat and such, but I feel like these ones are a bit obvious, which is whatever, but I don't know. All right, fam, that's what I got for you this week for this review. Coming in hot will be my review for Whisper Down the Lane. I'm really liking that book. <laughs> so far, I'm really, really liking it. Clay has put me right into this and it's fucking awesome. All right, I hope the days are kind and people treat you well. If not, I want names and numbers. No, I'm kidding. Guess that movie fan.